Welcome everybody, Brother Dan Goodwin, your host, the God's Final Jubilee Program. We're glad to have you with us tonight. And uh, we are going to uh, keep this thing uh, brief, but I wanted to come on and share some things with you about what's going on. Uh, this is, of course, September 23rd, 2018, uh, Sunday evening. And the Judge Kavanaugh hearings are just going crazy, the nomination thing. But I want to start off with the scripture here from the book of Proverbs, verse uh, chapter 18, verse 17, says this, He that is, um, uh, let's see, that's not the verse I want. Oh, here it is. Uh, chapter 18, verse 13, He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him, the one who hears it. Let me explain what that's saying. He that, heareth a he that answereth the matter or makes a decision or a judgment about something going on before he heareth it. Now, that doesn't mean before he, you know, hears what's going on. That means before he does his investigation and determines the truth uh, based on the facts of what's going on. Um, God says it's folly and shame unto you if you hear something and you make a judgment on that before you know all the facts. For it's uh, uh, that is folly and shame unto you. So all you uh, Democrats out there, and some of you Republicans who've made a decision on the matter concerning Judge Kavanaugh and his innocence or guilt, I want to say publicly, shame on you. You should be disciplined in the Senate. You really should. Uh, those of you who have come out and said she sounds believable, I believe her, and you haven't heard the facts. She hasn't even told where it happened, when it happened. Uh, nobody has corroborated the story. You haven't heard the judge's side. And you've determined that she's truthful and he's guilty. Shame on you. And I hope, uh, I hope that the, uh, it ain't going to happen. But what ought to happen is the Senate ought to convene and discipline uh, these people. There ought to be some consequences for, for getting on public television, getting in the media, and uh, and spilling your guts and telling the whole world that you believe someone's guilty uh, before there's any evidence whatsoever. Shame on you. But that's where we are today. So uh, with that said, I want to I wanna give you some things about what's going on. And uh, here's what's going on. The hearing ended. It was a charade from the beginning. The uh, uh, th these crazy uh, hearings uh, where they were uh, trying to determine whether they were going to confirm Judge Kavanaugh. Uh, they had outbursts right from the very moment that the gavel was banged and the hearings began. The Democrats uh, acted like little teenage school kids and uh, uh, acted like buffoons that they are. And, uh, and, and Senator Grassley, somehow he lost, let's be honest, he lost control of this thing right from the very moment he banged the gavel. He lost control of the hearing. And uh, they should have called for order. And if need be, they should have thrown some of the rascals out of the hearing because um, they were behaving like little teenage school kids. And, uh, but, all right, but, but there we have it. The hearing went on. Uh, they got to the last day of the hearing, the hearing ends, they schedule the vote, and what happens? You know what happened, Diane Feinstein has something in her hand, and she makes the claim that, uh, uh, that they've got a woman who wants to remain anonymous, doesn't want her name used, but, but she uh, has an accusation from 36 years ago. By the way, the document that Dianne Feinstein has needs to be turned over to the chairman of the committee. She refuses to give it to him. So there really isn't an accusation. There's not. There, there's, there's Dianne Feinstein who makes the claim and this woman's lawyer, but nothing in writing. There's, there's no accusation been made in writing that's been given to anybody. Um, so this went on. They, they wanted to postpone the, the vote and all this stuff, which they did. I think Mr. Grassley made a serious error. I think he made an error after he banged the gavel and let the Democrats control the hearing and do all that foolishness that they did. And I think, uh, I think he uh, made another mistake when he allowed the Democrats to force him into uh, extending this hearing and allowing this woman to come and testify without any evidence on public airways across the world going to muddy the waters and going to slander a man 
with something that she claims happened 36 years ago that she has no evidence for. Now there's always a certain amount of people in the, in the community and in the world who are going to believe whatever they hear without evidence. Why would you allow somebody to come and smear another person without evidence? Uh, you know, the Bible talks about there needs to be two credible witnesses to bring something before a judge. This, this woman's got nothing. Now let me, let me give you a few things here. Uh, these are some thoughts I had yesterday. By the way, everything's changed now. Tonight, Sunday night, this thing has changed again. And I knew it would, and I told people it was going to. Here's what I've been telling folks. This woman, this woman is not going to get on the stand and testify unless an agreement is made that she cannot be cross-examined about certain things. Because if she is, she'll look like the, the, the fraud that she is. Now, let me, let me tell you why. If I were the attorney that was going to question her, I would walk into the hearing room. I would have under my arm, I'm looking for, I would have under my arm a yearbook. I'd have it under my arm like that. I'd have a yearbook from her school, that private girl's school in Maryland. I'd have the yearbook. And I'd make sure that she sees it in my hand, and I'd lay it on the desk in front of me. And uh, I think at that moment, the girl would get up or she would, uh, she would make the claim that she's ill and uh, can't testify because in the yearbook is all the evidence needed to end this thing. Because in the yearbook, which by the way, nobody that I know has refuted the yearbook. The yearbook is online and it's been taken off, but somebody got it before they took it off. And th this, this sweet little 15-year-old girl isn't quite as sweet as, as we're being told that she is. Uh, there's some pretty provocative pictures of her in the yearbook and some pretty bad statements by her about the drunken parties and the fact that they didn't even know who they were with or who they slept with that night uh, because they were so drunk. Uh, so that's the little lily white girl that uh, supposedly uh, can't sleep at night because somebody um, got on top of her. Nothing happened, but somebody got on top of her and 36 years later she's, she's in complete... Uh, uh, she's shutting that she can't handle it. It's, it's such such an awful thing that happened to her. Uh, I don't I don't believe her. I don't believe. By the way, you nobody should believe her because we have no right to believe any evidence against anybody until it's proven. Uh, that's right, and it shouldn't be brought before a hearing without evidence. And uh, if, if she uh, def if somebody defrauds you with lies or is bringing forth something without evidence, uh, you can sue them defamation of character. Uh, but it won't matter. The, the whole goal of this thing is pretty plain, isn't it? So, what have we got here? We've got a yearbook. And you can go online and see. By the way, Rush Limbaugh talked about the yearbook. Um, some others talked about and The pictures are on there. Old black and white. We're talking uh, uh, black and white pictures. they got pages of the yearbook that you can look at. And I have not clicked on them and got close-ups and read. I, I don't want to read that stuff. But, uh, but it's shocking what was going on at that, at that school, that high school. It's shocking what they were allowed to put in yearbooks. Uh, my goodness. Um, yeah, so, um, so here we go. We got a yearbook. We got a yearbook that, that shows her character when she was 15. And so if there's no evidence, and it's hearsay, it's her word against his word, he's got a pretty good reputation. He's got 50 or 60 women that have came forward immediately to give a recommendation of him that they've known him for years and he's never shown any character traits like this at all. So, uh, and he's got an impeccable record. He's been investigated six times by the FBI for different jobs. He's been on the courts for years. He has a good name. Does that mean he didn't do these things? No, but uh, it's, it's credible uh, character witness, right? Uh, and, the, and the hundreds of people that know him and uh, have come forward on his behalf. Uh, but but we have so we have that we have his testimony his his good character his good life that he's lived. Then we have her. When you look in the yearbook, this is a different her than the Democrats are trying to portray her as. Um, <laughs> you just have to go look at the yearbooks for yourself. All right. So secondly, she she mentions either three or four witnesses, and, and there's different accounts on the internet, so I don't know which it is. There's either three or four people that she mentioned by name that were there in that house. 
all three or four of them have publicly come out before uh, and by an affidavit or word of mouth have sworn that these things they have no memory that this ever happened so she had so the, even the people she mentioned that were there have denied that this happened uh, let's see um, what else oh by the way one of those was a very close friend she said and that very close friend has said she has no recollection recollection of this this doesn't look good folks and you gotta, you got to ask yourself, with, with all that, just what I've mentioned so far, why have we got a hearing schedule for Thursday? Why would you bring this woman in when her story, when, when the four people she mentioned that were in the room, all four of them deny any knowledge of this. In fact, some of them even said that this does not sound like the Kavanaugh that I knew. Uh, they had no knowledge of this. So... Why is this woman still scheduled to come on Thursday? <laughs> you got to ask yourself that. All right. Then there's the lie detector test. Oh, my goodness. Uh, they keep saying, she took a lie detector test. She's, she's telling the truth. We've been defrauded here, too. Have you heard this? Have you heard about the lie detector test? Anybody out there, do you know who gave her the lie detector test? Her lawyer. I said her lawyer. Have you ever heard anything like that in your life? Now, Dianne Feinstein and the others who've got behind podiums and got on CNN and NBC and, and, and have told us she's credible. Of course, she's even took a lie detector test. So she is credible. Did you hear anybody mention what the lie, who gave her the lie detector test? That's called, being def, that's called defrauding. That's, that's fraud. That's actually lying. You're, you're putting something out there to the American people that in your heart you know is a fraud because, number one, it was given to her by her own lawyer. You, you think there's any bias there? Hello? Could there be any bias in this? Her lawyer, who's a Trump hater and, a, and an, act, an extreme activist. Her lawyer. By the way, there's more. The lie detector test. The question she was asked, she was never asked, are you telling the truth about J Judge Kavanaugh? She was never asked that. She was asked questions like, did you write this, this document? This document of accusation, did you write it? Yeah. Okay, so she didn't lie. She said she wrote it. She didn't ask her if what she wrote was the truth. <laughs> It's a fraud. It's an absolute fraud. And if, and if, the, and if the lawyer who questions her brings the yearbook and says, is this you? Did you write this? Uh, what, what kind of life did you live when you was 15? What did you mean when you said, uh, when you got the next morning you were so drunk you didn't remember who you were with that night? What did you mean by that, little Miss Prissy White? <laughs> uh, I'd be asking about the lie detector. Too. I'd get the truth about the lie detector. By the way, she wanted to be anonymous, yet two months earlier, what did she do? She hired a lawyer. And she took a lie detector test. But she wasn't coming forward. She was going to stay anonymous. But she did those things. See, this that's a fraud. That's a fraud. And Diane Feinstein's a part of the fraud. Because she stood there and we all heard her say it. Look, I, I didn't want to release this. But of course it got released to the press. Who did that, right? Um, so the, her lawyer is an extreme activist. Extreme activist. Extreme anti-Donald Trump. Um... So now they want to delay the hearing. Why? They want an FBI. Uh, they want the FBI to get involved. Um, by the way, um, Miss Prissy White, Christine, she became an anti-Trump activist also, 2015 or 16, somewhere in there. By the way, she doesn't know what year this happened. She doesn't know what month it happened. She doesn't even know what house she was at. Now, why is that? So you're so distraught because a man did this to you. And you don't remember, you don't remember the, what, how old you was. You don't remember what house you was at. You don't remember what year it was. She thinks she was 15. She's not sure. See, there's a window there so nobody can ever check her story. Do you, do you understand? She's, she's being vague so nobody can ever pin her down and catch her in the lie. You say, well, I don't know if it was that year or this year. I don't know if it was this month or this month. I don't know. I think I was 15. I, uh, but I know it was him. Sure you do. Sure you do. Just enough vagueness so nobody can ever pin you down and, and, and find and, and get you for uh, for lying for for um, 
Okay, she don't know the year, the month, she don't know the house. She wanted to be anonymous. We got a lawyer, a lie detector test two months before the hearing. And just happened, they just happened to release this right after the hearing ended when they'd scheduled the vote. So, uh, this was all planned. This had been planned for months. She sent letters to Feinstein instead of sending the letter to the chairman of the committee. Why is that? Hey, Miss Prissy, why, why didn't you go to the police if there's a, if there's a crime done here? Um, why didn't why don't you go to the why didn't you go to the police and and if uh, Diane Feinstein's not in charge of the committee why didn't you send a letter at least another letter to to Senator Grassley as well as Diane Feinstein why did it only go to Feinstein because this is all part of the plot and the timing was everything you couldn't send the letter to to Mr. Grassley uh, on the on, on after the hearing ended it'd be too late but you could send it to Diane Feinstein and you could they could all be in cahoots here and they are. Uh, you'd have to be you'd have to be a deaf blind mute to not know what's going on here or you, you got to be a Democrat to not know what's going on here uh, what else we got here by the way this what is this all about why didn't she report it to the police back then okay a lot of women don't they say okay and by the way uh, she was not raped if if what she says is true uh, it's a serious thing but it's not she was not raped um, you know, according to her, didn't, you know, you know, my goodness, why didn't she report to the police? Why didn't she tell her mother? Didn't, she didn't even tell one of her friends. Have you ever heard of that before? All right. Now, listen, what is this about? I'll tell you what this is about. This is about delaying the vote because this man's the swing vote on the highest court in the land. And they are scared to death because their sacred cow is in danger. And you know what I'm talking about. We're talking about abortion. Their sacred cow is in danger. And they're willing to defraud. They're willing to lie. They're willing to spend millions of dollars. They'll, they're willing to do any. They're willing to look stupid like some of the Cory Booker. Uh, admitted to groping a 15-year-old girl and he's standing in judgment of Judge Kavanaugh? Give me a break, Mr. Booker. Um, and half these others standing up saying, ah, this woman should be believable. And they got people, they've got a fund in Congress to pay for, uh, to buy off accusers. Let's release the records on who's used that fund. Let's do it tomorrow. Let's release the record on who in Congress, who in the Senate, who on that very committee has used that money to buy off a sexual predator that uh, uh, you know was going to go public with, with something. Um, this is about delay. This is about abortion. This is about Donald Trump and the hatred of Donald Trump. Did you hear some of the questions? They were trying to pin him down about whether whether he thought that uh, Trump could uh, pardon himself or that he was above the law and this and that. What is this about? They're worried that something's going to go to the Supreme Court about Donald Trump, and they're worried that he's not going to uh, side with them. So it's about it's about all these things. Senator Grassley, I want to say something to you. I think you're a great guy. I think you're a, a nice guy. Mr. Grassley, you made a huge mistake here. Number one, when you pounded the gavel for the first time and the sessions began, you should have you should have cleared the room if you had to. You should have ended that that kangaroo court that was taking place under your leadership, my friend, Mr. Grassley. You should have got a handle on that. You should have you should have uh, uh, whatever you got to do, cancel a uh, put uh, take a recess. Talk, uh, discipline some people uh, that never should have got out of hand like it did. Never should have got out of hand like that. Shame on uh, shame on us. Secondly, when the hearings were over, you should have uh, not given in to this ploy here. You should never have given in and gave uh, and extended the vote and gave a hearing to these people. Because the moment you did that, the moment you did that, Senator Grassley. The wheels began to turn, and I said this right away to some friends of mine. I said, this ain't over. They're going to bring other people in, uh, because this woman cannot stand on her own. There's no way she gets on that witness stand. Now, she can get on and give her story, but when they begin to question her with the, with the goods that we've got here, 
she's going to look like the fraud that she is. There's no way she can stand on that witness stand and answer these things and be credible. In fact, you, you could almost throw the key away and send her to jail just for this. This is fraud. What's, what I believe is going to happen, here's what I said yesterday, and this is before these women, there's some new women out now. What I said was going to happen, they're going to come along sometime during the week. I said this yesterday. They're going to come out and say, we've got other witnesses that have just come forward. They're scared. They don't know what to do. They're, they're in fear of their life. We're trying to uh, uh, corroborate with them now. We need time. And that's going to go, that was going to go before the whole country on, on the news. And uh, Mr. Grassley, if you care about justice, you've got to postpone this. We've got more witnesses. We need time. Well, they already gave them time. How do you not give them more time? You messed up, Senator Grassley. The vote should have already happened. Now we've destroyed a man's life. Now we've got a, a, a man uh, who, who can't answer. He can't defend himself. Nobody could. De uh, Mr. Clean. Remember the old Mr. Clean commercial? Mr. Clean couldn't defend himself in, on, in, in, from this stuff. Nobody can. Uh, what do we do now? Senator Grassley, what have you done? You opened the door. You said, bring this woman in. We'll let her speak. Okay, how do you defend against her? How, how does Judge Kavanaugh say, look, here it didn't happen and here's my proof. There, there's no, he don't know what year it is. He don't know what month it happened. We don't know what house it happened at. Uh, my goodness, how do you defend against that? Why would you have this woman come? And here's, here's what I said was going to happen. Either before or after she gets to the courtroom, Diane Feinstein and these others are going to say, Mr. Mr. Grassley or Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, we have a motion. We need to adjourn. Uh, we have other witnesses. We, and they're going to hold up a, a file. We've got other witnesses that have come forward, and we need to cooperate with them. We need to reset. We need time. That's what was going to happen, and, and it still is going to happen. Now, we've got a report. Let me go to it here. We've got a report here. Um... The, the gist came out, this is Sunday, this is the 23rd, Sunday night, another woman. Another woman has come out the next year, 1983 or somewhere in there, and this was freshman year of college. She's accusing him of, uh, by the way, she didn't see him. She heard somebody mention his name that, uh, that, uh, that Brett Kavanaugh was the one that did it. She didn't see his face. She didn't, she didn't see him do it. So there's, there's, do you see the loophole here? Do you see how fraudulent people do this? They leave themselves a way out so that they can't be pinned down and accused of, of, of perjury. If it comes out and a witness comes forward and three witnesses come out and say, no, it wasn't him, it was this guy. She didn't lie because she didn't actually see him. She heard somebody mention his name. Do you understand what I'm saying here? You can't have this kind of circus going on. You can't have somebody with hearsay who says this guy did this because I heard it in the room. I heard people say it was him. You didn't see it. That's hearsay. And by the way, was he even? did this even happen? It may have happened, but it probably wasn't Judge Kavanaugh. Uh, we can never know. We can never know. So another one's come out. How many more are going to come out before Thursday? This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Senator Grassley, what are you going to do now, sir? You opened the door. You said, bring her in. We'll post one. We'll give you till Thursday. Uh, we, we, want to, we want to be kind. We want, we want to be sensitive. We, uh, kind? Kind to who? Brett Kavanaugh and his children? Is this kind to his children and his wife who've got to live the rest of their lives with this black, uh, black blotch hanging over them? This never should have saw the light of day. Diane Feinstein should have been silenced in that room immediately. She never should have been given license to speak about this nonsense. Now, you can't stop them from going before the cameras, but uh, now look where we are now. What does Brett Kavanaugh do now? He's denied this next thing with this other woman. And by the way, this will be all over the news tomorrow morning. This will be every news uh, station tomorrow will be talking about the other woman. You can click on the story on the Drudge Report. It's right there. And you can, her name is there. And, and her sob story of, uh, uh, well, you know, she didn't, she didn't come forward for 35 years either. And, 
uh, all this stuff and um, now everyone will be digging up her. By the way, these women have ruined their lives. The, the doctor who's coming or possibly coming to speak against the uh, Brett Kavanaugh, she's ruined her life. Uh, this woman here, her, her, life, her life's ruined. Everyone's going to know her name. The Democrats will use these women forever. They'll squeeze everything out of them they can. And, and when this is over, these women will be thrown to the side. It won't, they won't matter. Um, you know, what, what a disaster. This is never supposed to happen. Never. If you can be found guilty by an accusation without any proof, then nobody, nobody out there uh, can survive. Nobody. They cannot allow this woman to be cross-examined. I'm talking about the Democrat now. You cannot let her be cross-examined. She'll look like an idiot. They will ask for a delay. They will mention they've got other witnesses coming forth. They need time to corroborate. Um, this will never end. This, you cannot win. All you can do now is have the vote. Up or down. Either he's in or he's out. Um, what a disaster. Now I think you've got to get all the facts out. I think you've got to get all the facts out about this doctor woman. I, I'm telling you, I think the yearbook has got to be uh, made public to everybody. I think uh, these other, other things, the fact that all four people have, de have denied that it happened. I think you've got to let the American people know the fraud of, about the lie detector test that they pushed on us and made us think she took a valid lie detector test. Um, I want to know who's, who's paying for her lawyer. Uh, Senator Grassley, you need, to, you need to demand that. Senator Grassley, you're the chairman. You need to demand the, the records of who is paying for her, her lawyer and when it happened. And uh, this, uh, they're destroying a man's life. It's time, to, uh, it's time to stand up and get a backbone and get the proper information so the American people can know what's going on. What a disaster. What a, what a monkey core. What a... What, uh, the Republicans, I'm telling you, uh, sometimes they're, we're our own worst enemy. I mean, they sit there and you got Susan Collins in Maine. Well, I don't know. And you got, you got Flake, Senator Flake, who's on his way out. Good riddance to you, Flake, boy. Good riddance to you. Shame on you. You're a, you're a reproach to the conservative movement, Mr. Flake. I know you don't like Mr. Trump, but does that mean you got to be a baby murderer at the same time? Take the stand with the Democrat and, and, and take the stand that, uh, I don't know, uh, we better get to the bottom of this. This woman's made an accusation. We, we better hear it. Well, Mr. Flake, it'll be you next time. Mr. Flake, are you listening? It'll be you next time some woman says, oh, Mr. Flake did this. And you're going to want somebody to believe you, mister. Well, you've been listening to a little bit of a fiery God's Final Jubilee program. What's all this got to do with prophecy? Everything. The governments of the world are wild beasts that cannot be, cannot be tamed. That's what the Constitution's for, by the way. The Constitution was to be chains about the ankles of the beast. That's right. And that's all in this new book that's being written right now. It'll be ready. It'll be going to the printer in just a few days. Seven clocks are ticking. I have a chapter in there where I talk about governments and kingdoms and the chains that, uh, that, are, that, that are needed to restrain these kingdoms. And uh, uh, exciting book. Go to the website, godsfindjubilee.com, and take a look at the book. Read about Read the back cover. Read a little bit of information about the book. And uh, I think you'll want to get this book. So, well, God bless you. Pray for your nation. Pray for your leaders. Pray for uh, uh, Brett Kavanaugh. Pray for, pray for uh, how do you pray? I don't know. What do you pray? I mean, uh, uh, how, how do you salvage this thing? Now, I'm not saying that, that he can't get in, uh, um, but my goodness, even if he gets in, he's going to be, he's going to be dogged for years. He's going to be the, he's going to be the, the, the wicked, uh, the rapist on the Supreme Court. Uh, Mr. Grassley, I'm not, I'm not a parla parliamentarian. I, I don't know all the rules and all, but I'm telling you, uh, this wasn't right. This, this floodgate, this door should have never been opened for these rats on the other side to pour this garbage into, into this man and cause what they've caused to this country. Mr. Grassley never should have opened the door and said yes to uh, extending this thing. Because you, 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 what do you, what do you do now? Well, God bless y'all. We'll see you next time.